بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله um, So yesterday in our reminder we talked about إبادة and we discussed how إبادة of course is a very broad term um, which includes everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves and we discussed how ibadah is basically submitting oneself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, and one of the greatest forms of ibadah is to do the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To do the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Shaykh Abdul Ghaffar, he just recited a few minutes ago, ayah 152 from Surah Al-Baqarah. And in that ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, فَذْكُرُونِي أَذْكُرْكُمْ وَاشْكُرُونِي وَلَا تَكْفُرُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, remember me. Yes, remember me. And I will remember you, or I will make mention of you. Of course, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't forget. Remember me, and I will make mention of you. And be grateful to me, and be not ungrateful. In this reminder, I want to focus on the first part of the ayah, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands us with dhikr, to remember Him, to make mention of Him. Now if you think about the verse, the verse is truly amazing. Because what is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying in this verse? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying in this verse, I mean, what we talked about Allah yesterday. We said Allah is the Rabb. What's the meaning of Rabb? Who can tell me? Sustainer. Sustainer is one of the meanings of Rabb. What else? If you get this right, you can have iftar with Shaykh Abdul Ghaffar tomorrow. What else? The master, the sustainer, the nourisher. Yes, we said these are all meanings of Rabb. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Rabb, will remember you or make mention of you if you remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Is there anything greater than that? Now just think for a moment. That who is it that you admire in life? Think about a person that you admire in life. Think about a person that you respect. Yes, it could be somebody who's done well in, in your field of work. It could be somebody who's do, done well in business. It could be a celebrity. And in these day, this day and age, many youngsters like influencers. You think about these people, yes, that you really look up to. You respect, you value, you admire them. If that person that you have in your mind now was to make mention of you, was to give you a shout out, how would you feel? Yes, if that person was to know your name, how would you feel? You would feel ecstatic that this person I look up to is remembering me, knows me, has given me a shout out. Yeah, the football fans here, yeah, those who support City, yeah, if De Bruyne gave you a shout out, yes, if Foden gave you a shout out, if Haaland gave you a shout out, you would think, how is Haaland, De Bruyne know my name? He's giving me a shout out. The United fans, United fans, Masakin. <laughs> There's no, uh, there's no stars for United. Uh, if Johnny Evans gives you a shower, you're gonna think, who's, who's Johnny Evans? Yeah? You get the point. The point is what? Is that when you hold somebody in high regard, and that person gives you some time and attention, you're going to value that. You're going to feel over the moon. And the truth is, my dear brothers and sisters, is that we shouldn't chase, um, we shouldn't chase the attention of the creation. The attention that the creation will give you is very fickle. It's not worth anything really. We should be chasing the attention of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of you, then there's nothing greater than that. If you're known by Allah, then what can be greater than that, my dear brothers and sisters? So in this verse, we're told that make mention of Allah, be people of dhikr, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will remember you. And that's where you get true peace. Honestly, true peace in this life comes out, comes through the remembrance of Allah. You could be involved in all of the ills of society, whether it's drugs, alcohol, women, all of these things. They don't bring you true peace. True peace only comes when you connect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when you recognize Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So dhikr, and when we think about dhikr, dhikr is very broad. Yes, it in includes the rituals that we do. But dhikr, of course, is also thinking about Allah. And in making statements of dhikr, statements of remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the truth is that, you know, when you remember Allah, this is something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves. There's a hadith where Muawiyah, he narrates, and I'll paraphrase the hadith, that he went by, by a group of people, and they were sat, 
Um, and Muawiyah said that, why are you gathered here? And they said, we're gathered here to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Muawiyah says, has anything else brought you together other than this? And they said, no, the only reason we're here is to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then Muawiyah, he, the hadith goes on, that he narrates that the Prophet والسلام, came out and there was a circle of his companions and they were sat. Um, and, he, and he asked them the same question, what has caused you to sit here today? And they said that we are sitting here gathered to remember Allah. Yes, praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for guiding us to Islam and bestowed this blessing upon us. And the ending of the hadith is what? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Atani Jibreel, that Jibreel came to me. فَأَخْبَرَنِي أَنَّ اللَّهَ يُبَاهِ بِكُمُ الْمَلَائِكَةِ Allahu Akbar. He says that Jibreel came to me, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is saying this. And he says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala boasts about you to the angels. Those of you who are gathered for the remembrance of Allah, Allah is boasting about you to the angels. We ask Allah that He makes this a gathering of remembrance. This we're coming together. Why? To remember Allah. May Allah make it from those gatherings. Say Ameen. Of course, we also know from the hadith Qudsi where um, the Prophet وسلم, he said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, that I am as my slave thinks of me. If my slave remembers me when he's by himself, I will remember him. I will make mention of him. But when my slave remembers me in a gathering, I make mention of that slave in a gathering which is better. What gathering is that? That is a gathering with the angels. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of those who gather together with the angels, my dear brothers and sisters. And two points I want to finish on. The truth is, my dear brothers and sisters, is that if you live a life in which you're not connected with Allah, you don't remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then the reality is you've miffed, missed the whole purpose of life. The Prophet sallallahu said in the hadith, that, He said the similitude of the one who remembers Allah, who's conscious of Allah, who's connected with Allah, who thinks about Allah, and the one who doesn't is like the living and the dead. If you're not connected with Allah and focused on Allah in your life, then you might as well be dead. And this is why Ibn Taymiyyah rahimullah, he said the famous statement. He said, He said that remembrance to the heart, yes, remembrance for the heart is like water for a fish. What is the state of a fish when it's taken out of water? When the fish is taken out of water, the fish dies. A heart that's void of the remembrance of Allah is dead. Yes, it's spiritually dead, there's nothing there. So if you want to keep your heart alive, it requires us to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I'll finish on three forms of dhikr that we should think about. Number one is salah. Yes, salah is one of the greatest forms of dhikr, of remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When Musa alayhi salam was lost in the desert, yes, he was making his way back to Egypt from Madian. And he's with his family, he gets lost. He sees in the distance a fire. And he says to his family, I'm going to go to that fire, yes, to get some guidance and directions. He goes to the, towards the fire and this is where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks directly to Musa alayhi salam. And what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say? He says, Innani ana Allahu la ilaha illa ana fa'budani wa akim is salata li dhikri. In the first meeting between Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that first conversation with Musa alayhi salam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says what? That indeed I am Allah, there's no one worthy of worship except me. And he worshipped me. Establish the prayer for my remembrance. The prayer, when you establish the prayer, you're remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You might be busy at work. Yes, you might be at college. You might have a meeting going on. The time for salah comes. You put all of that to the side. Why? Because you want to remember Allah. This is dhikr, my dear brothers and sisters. Number two, the second form of dhikr is the Qur'an. Reciting the Qur'an, having a relationship with the Qur'an. We've talked about the importance of the Qur'an for the last few weeks in the khutbahs and reminders. The Qur'an is our guide. It's a great form of dhikr when you read the Qur'an, my dear brothers and sisters. And you connect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the last one is to, of course, make statements of remembrance. The Prophet ﷺ has taught us many statements of remembrance, many adhkar. The Prophet ﷺ, when you look in his ahadith, he talks about adhkar for when you wake up in the morning, when you go to sleep at night, when you enter the bathroom. Subhanallah, when you enter the masjid, you leave the masjid. When you go to the marketplace, you know, there's an amazing hadith, and the scholars discuss the authenticity of the hadith and the, 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 the chain of narrators. And some of 
them said it's acceptable. The Prophet وسلم, he said that the one who enters the marketplace and he says, La ilaha illallah wahda, la sharika lahu, lahu al mulku wa lahu al hamd, yuhi wa yumid, wa huwa hayyun la yamud, bi yadihi al khayr, wa huwa ala kulli shayin qadir. Whoever goes to the marketplace, and the truth is, you know, if I was to ask, there's maybe a thousand people here today, how many of us have made this dhikr when we've gone to the marketplace, when you've gone to traffic center? The reality is maybe out of the thousand you can count the number of people on the hand. What did the Prophet say? The one that says this dhikr, when he goes to the marketplace, what will he have? Thousands of rewards. Thousands, alf alf, yani thousands of rewards. Thousands of sins are removed. Why? Because you're remembering Allah at a time when nobody else is. When everybody's busy and, and with, with dunya and whatnot, you're remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So there are so many adhkar that we should really reflect on. The Prophet taught us, and subhanallah wa bihamdihi, a hundred times a day, your sins are forgiven, even if they're like the form of the sea. La ilaha illallah wahdahu, la sharika lahu, lahu al mulku wa lahu al hamd, wa huwa ala kulli shayin qadir. A hundred times a day, what do you get? A hundred good deeds, hundred sins removed, um, yani, uh, freeing ten slaves, so many adhkar. And there's one book, and I'll finish on this, I've gone over. I was told 10 minutes. Okay, yesterday was 10 minutes and 10 seconds. Today I've gone to 11 minutes. So forgive me for going over one minute. But this book is a book that every Muslim should have. It's called Hisnul Muslim. Hisnul Muslim, yes, Fortress of a Muslim. In that book, it contains all of the adhkar, the daily adhkar that we should be making on a regular basis. And if we do that, then we will be, inshallah, from the dhakirin. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He makes us from people who remember him, who connect with him, who love him, and who live for him. Wa akhiru da'wana, and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.